We're back in Genoa after four days on board MSC World Europa. Is this ship just a cheap Oasis class? We found out the hard way why you should prepay for everything before you get on board. Will the usual MSC niggles annoy us? Or have things changed? Follow along and find out as we review everything on board. Got any comments? Throw them down below and let us know what you think. These are just our opinions from our one cruise and one experience. This will be rated out of five out of each category and then we'll pop it in our leaderboard. So will it go straight to the top and beat Seaview? Or will it be down the bottom where Virtuosa is hanging out? Let's go back four days when the sun wasn't out here in Genoa as we go back, rewind style, to embarkation. Four Bs have always found Embarkation Day a breeze from Southampton and Barcelona with MSC. They do it every day, they're really efficient and it was really quick and easy. We didn't find that though on this case from Genoa. We'll go on to that very very shortly but just quickly, the terminal staff, there was plenty of them, they were really polite, really friendly, including our check-in lady and we also got some free Italian bread. So those were the positives, things to improve on. I think the problem is Genoa. The terminal isn't suitable, hence that we had to check in in a different terminal. It took over two hours with various stops, including a bus journey for around 15 minutes. It just seemed to go on and on and on. I think the answer is they either sort out the terminal, get a new terminal, or they reduce the amount of people that they board from Genoa. As said, it seems to be a specific problem to Genoa, and we've always found MSC to be very efficient from other ports. We even had to check in our bags on the port side underneath a flyover for the road. So for that reason, unfortunately, we've got to give embarkation a two out of five. We now move on to the ship. World Europa is a massive ship, however it is really easy to navigate. The kids who Alice normally gets lost any ship we go on, she found it really easy to find her way around, as did I. It is absolutely stunning to look at, it's a very Instagrammable ship. Um, there are places where you just find lots of quirky little things that you can take pictures of, so a really cool ship to look at. The promenade in the daytime, it's amazing, it's beautiful, um, having the slide, the venom slide in the middle, it's a real focal point um, and the unspoilt views out the back are beautiful. The buffet area, the water park, the indoor pool, the dry slide, all really, really good. Uh, we loved all of those aspects of the ship. Potentially the theatres could be good um, and they were a really nice size. However, maybe just again, as we do always have this with MSC, having the right shows on board. And also the secret bar was amazing. Um, something that we would really highly recommend you find out how you get tickets for the secret bar. And this ship overall was perfect for families. The fact that there's no atrium, there's no real focal point of the ship that you can go to. Um, shops and bars, quite often seem to be misplaced. There wasn't really anywhere that you could just sit in a bar. It was almost like you had to go into a different bar, into a different bar. Um, there was no lounge areas, I would say. Um, the promenade itself could be an amazing space for this. If they had more bars that you could just sit in in the daytime, it would be really cool. Um, some of it looks a little bit cheap. Um, the LED screens compared to Virtuoso, I would say, they don't even compare. Um, I don't think I looked up once and thought, wow, that's a really cool show. However, on Virtuosa, I think every show I saw on the LED screens was really cool. And also, again, some of the theatres, the LED flooring um, was already breaking in parts, which wasn't very good considering it's a very new ship. Um, and when they bring out World America, they could really hike this up with making some of these improvements. So the reason that we have scored the ship itself a three and a half out of five, we've taken half a point off because there was no atrium and one point off for things just being in the wrong place. But again, that's very personal preference. Balcony cabins on MSC, we gave them a big thumbs up. 
bathroom a nice size good size bed that was comfy space in the wardrobes drawer space nice desk area kids like the bunk beds and the balcony was of a good size nothing to complain about so we give it a big five out of five for our cabin may i quickly interrupt this video by just saying if you're enjoying it don't forget to give it a like it really helps us out and if you love cruise content it's completely free press that subscribe button we've got so much more content from world europa on the way anthem of the seas avia and a new ship yoruba yoribia either way we've got some great cruise content so press that subscribe button now moving on to the service on the ship Overall, the service was good on World Europa. There were a lot of staff on hand. They were all very polite, always happy to help. There were a few niggles that we had. Our cabin steward, it has to be said, was absolutely, well, I shouldn't really say useless, but he was. Um, he was never anywhere to be found. He didn't introduce himself to us. So yeah, not so great with the cabin steward. And also there were quite a lot of new staff. They were having a turnover because there were some staff who had been on there for the six months who were getting off. So they were training up lots of new people. So you kind of got a different answer from everybody. Um, example, in one of the restaurants, the kids, there was a drink included in their meal and he didn't know this. And the kids actually pointed it out. So we wouldn't have got that. So only a very small niggle. Uh, we have deducted a point for the cabin steward and a point for a couple of the other bits um, with waiting staff in the MDR and also with the new turnover. So we have given the service for MSC World Europa a 3 out of 5. Now we're going to go over to the two smaller bees and they're going to give you their review. Ernest, first of all, what are your first impressions of World Europa? It's big. Yeah. And it's got a lot of water size. The only thing I don't like about it, because where, where are all the restaurants like pumped inside the atrium? And nothing. The Galleria. The Galleria. Galleria. The best water park at sea, except from Icon of the Seas. Yeah. So yeah, it's impressive, but it could be to be a water side, but it's not very good. And what do you think of the slide, the Venom slide? Yeah. Uh, it, it's good. It's quite it's slow, but <laughs> it's more for show, really, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Have the restaurants in a different place, and then have like like some seating there's nowhere to sit if you're walking in the thing have some like seating and some outside bars don't have everything in and just it makes no sense to be fair world you open or virtuosa um virtuosa world you open a world you open easy world you open oh okay yeah i like them both food and drink for us lots of positives we really like the buffet on world you open there's two of them for breakfast, lunch and dinner, we really like the choice. Of course, there was pizza, lots of fresh food and a selection for the kids as well. The new burger and pizza diner type place. Excellent. Would like a few more seats in there. But fresh pizza, lovely fresh breakfast bites, including pastries. Speciality restaurants priced perfectly. We really enjoyed the butcher's cut. We always do on MSC. Olav was great, all you can eat for $17.99, and the show in the teppanyaki was excellent. The only down part, we didn't really enjoy the MDR. We tend not to enjoy the MDR and MSC. They're packed in, the menu seems to be the same, it's all a bit rushed. So we've deducted one point for the MDR, give it a four out of five. A couple of the shows that we saw were pretty good. The slide, the Venom slide is a very cool concept and it was good fun to go down. The walk to park is really cool. Um, this was somewhere that if it had been a bit warmer, we probably would have spent a lot more time up there. The paid activities were good. So the bumper cars were really fun. Some shows we didn't see, so we can't obviously comment on them. And Silent Disco was good fun also. However, MSC, we do find this on a lot of the ships that we go on. There's a real lack of daytime entertainment happening. Uh, you can't just walk around and there be an activity going on or a quiz going on. The Luna Park, it could be a really cool place. Think of Virgin Voyages uh, party room when you go in there. It's a really cool theatre. However, the show was just really, really random. Alice won musical chairs. Why they were playing musical chairs, I don't know. The show in the Panorama Lounge, oh, it was very mediocre. 
uh, we were sat in the front and then felt really awful because we had to leave after half an hour because it was so boring. They were dancing, the singers were good, but it, it was an immersive show, but it just felt a little bit uncomfortable to us. It felt like we were almost just in somebody's living room watching them dance. There were no sail away parties. Um, this could be a massive thing that the, the space that they have on the promenade, it could be a really cool place to have a sail away party. So a bit of a thumbs down there. Also, no shows on the promenade. There was actually one show, which was a light show, where literally they flicked on a couple of laser lights in different colours for all of five minutes. Our reasons for point deductions are no daytime entertainment, better fit of shows. Um, there needs to be some more wow shows, I think, on this one. And also a little bit more going on around the ship. It's a lot of make your own entertainment. We are going to give the entertainment a two out of five for MSC World Europa. Love the Mediterranean ports. Most of them are right in town. Ports are only a short bus ride or walk away. Lots to do, lots of history to find out. They're great ports and we give them a massive thumbs up. The only one bad port that you'll find, not that it's a bad port, but Marseille is not one of our favorites and it's also a long, long way away from the town. So you have to take a half an hour bus journey into town. So for that reason, we're giving half a point off. But if you're going to the Mediterranean, on World Europa, you're going to visit some great ports and we give it a four and a half out of five. And last but not least, we have value for money. The good points on value for money. £400 for four nights. Absolute bargain. As Tom did say earlier, we did get an upgrade, so we did pay a little bit more than this. But still, £600, four nights for four people. Very good value. There's lots included. The water park, the slide, food, entertainment. Very good value on that point. However, negatives on this, the drinks were really expensive. We didn't have a drinks package on this cruise. The reason for that was we were going to be eating in speciality restaurants every night and we knew that we wouldn't be able to use our drinks package in those restaurants. Hindsight is a wonderful thing and I think if we were in this situation again, we would have the drinks package. The drinks, just for an example, a can of soda for the children was four euros extortionate lots of activities that were not included uh, these included obviously the bumper cars you've got the arcades so yeah some room for improvement on that reasons for point deductions as i've just said expensive drinks and there were lots of things that you had to pay extra for and i guess maybe this is why sometimes msc cruises you can get them a lot cheaper because they upcharge a lot of things when you're on board so that's how they make their money so our score for this one is a three out of five. So that gives MSC World Europa an overall school of 28. And that comes in our leaderboard just underneath Anthem of the Seas and MSC Preziosa. So that's our full review on MSC World Europa. If you've got anything you'd like to say, pop it in the comments below, give it a like. Don't forget, plenty more cruise content on the way, so don't forget to hit that subscribe button. We're going to complete our World Europa coverage of all of the restaurants. We're going to review them all on board and seeing what's included and what's not. On the screen very shortly, it is our World Europa ship tour. And what a ship tour it is as well. So it'll be on the screen very, very shortly. But as always, the only one thing to say... Happy cruising!